Hi. In this week's update, we're going to take a look at some of the distort functions in SoundThread and the Composer's desktop project, and how you might use them, and we're going to explore what pseudo wave cycles are. After that, we'll take a quick look at the development build, and take a look at some of the progress that's been made on the next update. If you're completely new here, I would recommend checking out the intro video that's linked below first. Before we get started looking at anything though, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's engaged with this so far. In particular, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported this project on Coffee and to everyone who's made bug reports and feature requests. They've been really, really helpful. If you'd like to be a little bit more involved with the development of SoundThread, including testing out pre-release builds and giving opinions on new features, I've made a Discord server which is linked below. There's nothing in the server right now, so come and say hi. But there should be a pre-release build with most of the features that will be coming in the next update up on the Discord in about a week or so. And it'd be really helpful if some people fancy doing some bug testing on that before it gets properly released on GitHub. In the first videos I made about SoundThread and the Composer's desktop project, I said, Distort uh, is my personal favourite category uh, within the Composer's desktop project. Uh, it has things that really nothing else does. So what are these things that it does that nothing else does? Conventional distortion can be defined lots of different ways, but most commonly the term is used to refer to hard and soft clipping and other forms of harmonic distortion. Clipping occurs when a signal exceeds the maximum threshold for loudness. When this happens, it will reshape the top of the waveform, and by doing this, introduces new harmonics that align to the harmonic series for the frequencies in that sound. It will make a sound brighter, buzzier, harsher. The Composer's desktop project and SoundThread do include this type of distortion, but most of the distort functions that are available work under a completely different principle that is completely unique. The distort functions in the Composer's desktop project look for what they refer to as pseudo wave cycles. To do this, it looks at the waveform of the sound to be processed and cuts it into tiny chunks. These tiny chunks are cut out any time the waveform crosses the zero crossing point, which is silence, twice. With a conventional, simple wave cycle like a sine wave, this will cut out the full wave cycle over the full 360 degrees of the phase of that waveform. However, for more complex waveforms and unpitched sounds, these waveforms will go above and below the zero crossing point multiple times before repeating. These distort functions don't care about this. They will cut it out whenever it crosses the zero crossing point twice. It will then take these chunks that may or may not align to the pitch of the sound and apply wave shaping to them. There are lots of different ways to reshape these chunks in the Composer's desktop project, and most of the distort functions just offer a different way of reshaping it. Some might repeat the wave cycle, others delete out wave cycles, some average wave cycles, and some take the wave cycle and replace it with a completely different waveform with a different shape. The result of this is usually still harmonic distortion, although not always. However, the number and distribution of the harmonics that it adds are totally weird. They produce really unique, interesting tones that change as the timbre of the wave changes. And the result of this is distortion, but not as we really know it. So let's take a look at some of these processes and have a listen to what they sound like. So here I just have this piano part. It sounds like this. We've heard it a fair few times in previous videos and I'm going to slow this down um, because uh, I think it sounds nice and also because a lot of these processes are adding additional higher harmonics. They work quite well with sounds that have been slowed down and pitched down and therefore lost some of their higher harmonics and we're going to slow this down by two octaves. We're going to slow it down by quite a lot and it sounds like this. So the first process that I'm going to take a look at is from the distort category uh, and we're going to start with a simple one and then we're going to add a couple of more weirder ones and just have a look at just a few. So we're going to start with this triangle one, I think it's probably one of the simplest ones to understand. What this does is it looks at the sound, it cuts out the wave cycles, cuts out those chunks every time it crosses the zero crossing point twice and instead of shaping it into anything resembling the original, it just replaces all of those with triangle waves of the same length. What this results in is 
adding additional harmonic content, in this case odd harmonics, because it's a triangle wave. And it will sound quite a lot like regular harmonic distortion, but just with a little bit of kind of extra grit and character, particularly on the slightly more unpitched sections that happen around the percussive sounds of the piano. Now, if you are listening on headphones uh, or good studio monitors, one thing you might have noticed is that left and right uh, are slightly different here. And with all these processes, they were originally designed to be used in mono. Uh, they don't pay any attention to how left and right interact. And so you might get this kind of stereo decorrelation from it. If you don't like that, you can just use this with mono sounds. However, I quite like some of the stereo decorrelation. Sometimes it's a bit much, but a lot of the time it just adds some really nice width to a sound, particularly when it's included in a mix with other sounds that are kind of filling out the center. So we're going to take a look at a slightly more interesting process now. Uh, and this one is distort fractal. What this does is it takes the chunks, takes the wave cycles, and makes multiple copies of them defined here by the scaling. And it speeds them up so that they fit within the original length of the wave cycle. So in this case, where it's set to two, for every one wave cycle, it will make two copies of that wave cycle. And then it mixes it in with the original. So you get your original sound, and then you get the kind of pitch shift up version of your wave cycle and so it retains all the harmonics of the original uh, but also gives you pitch shifted up versions of those harmonics and so you get a kind of direct harmonic relationship from your distortion this will add brightness to the sound and work particularly well here with this kind of slightly duller pitched down sound we'll start with two but then we'll bring it up to something a bit higher like 10 or 20. <laughs> And at these higher values, it can get a little bit harsh, maybe a little bit much, uh, but we can just bring that down. This loudness control here is a balance between our original sound and the distort fractal function. So I'm just going to bring this right down to about 0.2 and we'll run it again. <laughs> The next two processes I want to take a look at work a lot like pitch shifting and they're kind of the opposites of each other. Uh, the first one is multiply. So this works similar to the distort fractal. However, it doesn't mix in the original. And so we make multiple copies of our waveform and replace our waveform with them. This works a lot like a granular pitch shift up, but it's much dirtier and much grittier than a granular pitch shift. Whereas the divide does the opposite. It takes our wave cycle uh, and makes it longer. It divides it in length and it replaces any wave cycles that it would overlap with. And so we end up deleting parts out of our sound while also pitch shifting down. Uh, and so we get these really interesting, glitchy, gritty pitch shifts. 
Now, all of these sound really interesting, but often they might sound good mixed with the original. So it's worth noting that you can just use a gain plugin uh, as a wet dry mix. So I'm going to take my original and run it through this gain and run that back to the output. Uh, and then I'm also going to take a copy of that and run the divide through it. And I'm going to just have a little bit of the divide and 100% of the original. I thought it might be interesting to take a look at a kind of real world example, and in this case, something a bit more conventionally musical than I normally make. But this is something I've been working on for a side project and where I've used a lot of these distortions. And this is a kind of slightly wonky dance track made using the funky drummer breakbeat. And what I did is I ran the breakbeat through many of these distortion algorithms. I made, I think, about 10 or 15 variations just using different distortion algorithms in different settings to give me just a load of tonal variation and what i did from there was then jumble those up cut them out split them out to give me a load of different variations on the sound of this breakbeat just lots of tombral variations rhythmically they're all still the same but the tone of them changes drastically and i chopped and changed between these really quickly like every two three beats to give me a load of shifting and changing tones on its own it sounds like this And in the context of the whole track, it sounds like this. In the very last bit of this video, I'm just going to give some progress updates and where I'm at with the next update. I'm pretty close. I think if I can get some bug testers over on the Discord, I can have this out in about a week or so. Uh, if I find a lot of bugs, then it might be more like two weeks. But hopefully before the end of the month, we should have a new update out with everything that's here and a little bit more. So this is the development build. You will see things in this that aren't in the current version. So please don't go looking for everything that I'm about to demo. It won't be out for a little while yet. But uh, a few nice kind of UI things already. I had a YouTube comment. I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was that commented it, uh, that requesting autoplay. So now you can toggle autoplay on or off. So once it's done rendering, it will just start playing straight away. It will remember whatever you've toggled. So the next time you open up SoundThread, it will just keep your last setting. Uh, you'll notice some things look a little bit different. The reuse output button is now over here. That's for a very specific reason, and we're going to look at that in a minute. But the first thing just to mention is I have uh, got the database system for loading nodes in place, which has meant I have been able to massively expand a lot of the processes that are in here. I think so far I've added uh, I think nearly 40 or 50 more, um, and I'm going to have quite a few more in before the final update. I just need to go through, add them and test them. So there's a few more distorts, uh, there's a few more extends, uh, there's a bit more granulation going on, there's also reverb and delay, there's some of the synthesis modes that come with the Composer's desktop project. Lot of frequency domain PVOC processes that have been added and quite a lot more of these to come. I've got some of the formants processes in, a lot of people have been requesting. We've got some spectrum manipulation, uh, some different time stretching, some different amplitude and pitch controls, uh, quite a lot going on. Now, one thing you will have noticed, I said there was the synthesis modes and these can be added and these are 
inputs. Uh, and one thing that is going to be coming in the next update is the ability to have multiple inputs and different inputs. So we can now delete out the input file and we can make new ones uh, by just going to utilities and adding in inputs or just searching for input uh, and adding that in uh, and that will there work there. And you can have multiple files. They can be mix of mono and stereo. They can be mix of different sample rates. Soundthrope will just handle all of that for you. Uh, you can also include some of the synthesis modes uh, in your inputs. Uh, right now, this is kind of useful, but this is mostly just prep for the update after the next one, uh, where I'm going to be looking to implement processes that require more than one input file. Um, but this is here now because it's part of the development process for that. So we're going to get part of there and then in the next update and then the update after that we'll have processes with multiple inputs. Aside from that I've mostly just been fixing bugs and um, introducing new ones that I have to fix. I've just found one today. Uh, if you do find any bugs either in the development builds I'm going to put up on Discord or in any of the builds that are on GitHub please just make a issue on GitHub or just if you don't have a GitHub account comment it somewhere so that I know about it people reporting bugs is the easiest way for me to find them because there's so many different ways that this could end up being tested. So it's quite hard for me to find everything. Uh, I think that's all the progress so far for this week. And I will be making another video next week where I will have a few more updates and a demo of something else. If there's anything you'd really like me to demo, then please let me know. Uh, ideas for these videos is really helpful. This was just a quick overview of some of the distort functions. I might do some videos in future where I look at one or two of the distort functions in a bit more detail and really explore what they're doing but I just wanted to get people started I think a lot of people didn't really understand how these distort functions work so that's all for now and I'll chat to you all next week <laughs>